Hello and welcome to the Azure Resource Manager portal. This new portal has been in production now for about two months. It's been in preview for about 12 to 18 months. Uh, so some of you will, will already be very familiar uh, with this portal. Um, this portal uses a different set of APIs, um, so a different architecture from the classic portal. Although some features such as Active Directory Administration still have to be performed through the classic portal. Um, the rest of the features have been ported to the new portal and Microsoft's commitment now is to uh, release all new features for the new portal and the Azure Resource Manager APIs um, first and possibly provide something to the Service Manager. But make no mistake now, the Service Management model and its APIs are not exactly old hat but will be depreciated over time. So any new configuration administration you do for Azure should be done using the new portal and Azure Resource Manager. Now we're going to be looking at Resource Manager in a series of videos. In this first one I just want to look at some basic navigation of um, Azure Resource Manager. Now one of the best features of Azure Resource Manager is that it organizes objects into resource groups. So if we click on the left hand side, we click resource groups and we can see a list of uh, some of my resource groups. Now if you um, have ever used a classic portal, through there you can see a list of all resources or you can see a list of resources broken down by type. For example, a uh, list of virtual machines um, or a list of uh, web apps. Now this is fine, except it's very difficult through the classic portal to figure out which um, objects relate to which projects. So if I've got um, development project X and I know that development project has uh, VMs, SQL databases, uh, web apps associated with it, there's no way through the classic portal to identify all those objects without a weird naming convention that you might use. In uh, Resource Manager, we have resource groups and all objects are placed inside a resource group. So I can have a resource group for testing, development, production, um, a push, I can have resource groups for customer one, customer two, and all of their resources are placed inside the resource group. So if we look at one of my resource groups here, uh, MGB Leads Resource Group, and click on that, we can see it lists a set of resources that are part of this resource group. So this could be for a particular project, a particular business unit inside my organization. Um, here we've got an automation account, a few VMs, uh, a network, virtual network. So from a, just from a pure organization point of view, resource groups make, make things easier to, to navigate and work with. As I scroll down, uh, we get more information. So instead of having to monitor each resource independently, like we would have to do in the um, standard portal, the classic portal, here we can monitor resources as a group. So I've got monitoring for the group, it's the resource group itself. As I scroll down, I've also got billing for the resource group as a whole as well. So imagine that you're providing um, Azure resources for a particular business unit. You want to know how much that business unit owes you at the end of the month. Well, this billing will give you a view of that information. Um, if I want to drill down into individual resources, I can by selecting the individual resources. So selecting this VM here. And you'll notice as I select resources, additional blades are opened up in the new portal. And I can use these blades then to navigate to the different settings that I want to configure for each resource. Uh, one feature I like is at the top of the resource manager portal, we have the journey. So up here, we can see exactly where we are in our journey in administration. And I can click back to any blade that I want to work with. Now, another feature of uh, resource groups that are going to be really useful for, us, useful for us and a feature of Azure Resource Manager in general is role-based access control. So for my resource group, you see this icon on the right hand side looks like two uh, people. If I click on that, it opens up the users list. Now this is a list of users and groups that have administration access to this resource group. 
So imagine you've got a, an, Azure uh, an Azure subscription and you have a user that you want to give admin rights. Now, the user doesn't need admin rights to the entire subscription. The user just needs admin rights to a particular resource group. So through here, we can say add. Two more blades open up. And the first thing I can see is a, a list of roles. So I can select a role that I want my new user or group to have. So I can choose from one of the built-in roles. And then we get a list. Now this list of user and groups are taken from the Azure AD subscription that's associated with this um, Azure subscription. So in Azure AD, I've got uh, a list of users and groups that I can select from. Um, and I can give them the relevant roles inside this resource group, or we can use the invite option. Now this is pretty cool, because when I say invite here, all I do is put in a email address. Now right now it's a Microsoft account email address, so like outlook.com, hotmail.com, uh, Xbox Live account. I'm sure in the future they'll expand on that to include other online identities as well. But we type in the name of the individual. That I want to invite. Oops, let's just get the spelling right first. That I would like to invite. Um, and then, oops, oh, terrible. So you type in a valid email address there. Trust me, it does work. Type in a valid email address. Uh, we say invite, and it would go off and send an email to that individual, inviting them uh, into this uh, subscription. Now, if we um, have a look at the list of users, notice one of the users is this this user here that's been assigned the contributor permissions. So that's an invited user. That user was not part of my Azure AD subscription. But once that user gets the invite and accepts, that user will be able to log in to um, my subscription and access this resource group. And to show you what that, what that looks like, if we go to um, Chrome here, I've got Chrome installed, and I've logged in um, as that user, and you can see we see a similar dashboard, but this time it's, it's quite limited, here's the dashboard. And if I look under resource group list, it just shows the resource group that I've been assigned access to. Click on that. And we see the objects. Um, and now we will be able to um, administer the objects based on the permissions we've been assigned. So that's pretty cool. We didn't have we didn't have this before through the classic portal. You essentially made people co-administrators, and they had full admin rights to your entire subscription. This gives a much much more control. Now, resource group can contain objects uh, from across regions. So if you've got um, VMs from West Europe, VMs from North Europe, they can go inside the same resource group. Um, it may be as well, though, that you want to track objects across resource groups. So maybe you've got sets of resources that you want to be able to um, look at and, and monitor, um, but they're in different resource groups. Well, one of the other things we can do is associate tags uh, to resource groups as well. Um, these tags can be actually assigned to resource groups or individual resources. Um, and these tags are sort of key value pairs that we can then search against later on. So I can tag um, items for development, items for um, production, do a search for those items, and they will also come up as a list. And then I can perform admin tasks against that list. So tags are a way of tracking objects across resource groups for our entire subscription. So from a navigation point of view, organization point of view, the rule-based access control, already this is a very powerful uh, portal. Resource Manager itself, very powerful set of APIs, uh, giving us lots more control than we've ever had before. Now in later videos, we're gonna look a lot more detail about Resource Manager. Uh, we're gonna use PowerShell to integrate with Resource Manager. We'll discuss the difference between creating virtual machines using the Resource Man Management model and the classic model. Um, but based on the request that we've had uh, from uh, one of the subscribers to this channel, uh, tomorrow we'll be looking at setting up um, Azure load balancing using the resource management model. 
and we'll create a couple of VMs with IIS on there and we'll con configure the external load balancer um, uh, using PowerShell to load balance requests between those two VM VMs. So check back uh, on this site uh, tomorrow afternoon and that would be um, Saturday the 23rd of January 2016 um, and uh, the second video in this series will be there. Okay, thank you. Bye.